Hey, Carla. Good evening, teacher. How are you? Fine. And you? I'm doing excellent. Today was a good day, very productive. Ah, uh, good. Excellent. Yes, I, I like the days where you have many activities, but not so stressful, just many activities. That way you, the day goes very fast. When you are very busy. Yes. Because you are busy and you're doing this activity and that activity and then woof. When you, <laughs> when you say, oh my God, the day is finished. Yes, the, the time is, is, is very fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the best part. Mm -hmm. And for you, did you have many activities today or was it an easy day? Um, so, so, um, I, I, I am in my um, work office and in the morning I have a, a reunion very long mm -hmm. for four hours so very tired yes it was a capacitation a training a training yes mm -hmm. a training so very very boring but <laughs> important for my job so so you had to you had to <laughs> sit there and listen for the training huh yes yes and and, and at, at times uh i'm very uh lost the concentration and carla what is this carla the, you are, what oh, oh, okay okay i got it <laughs> but that's that's it for my job so i have to you have to pay attention huh yes yeah it happens sometimes it's very common that when you are there you say ah i don't care it's, it's i it's not so interesting but it's necessary so you have to do it mm -hmm. yes we see good evening. good evening good evening okay well, we're going to be continuing our ideas from yesterday. If we remember yesterday, we were looking at two different types of past tense. Yesterday, we were looking at the past simple and the past continuous. And I said today we were going to practice the past perfect. First, let's review what the difference between the past simple or past progressive in some situations. That, that's what they call it, past simple or past progressive. Okay. Sorry, past, past continuous or past progressive. All right. So is those are the ones with ing. So when you hear continuous, when you hear progressive, is always the verb to be and ing. All right. So whenever we have, uh, it doesn't matter any time we we have any word that has the continuous. Okay. For you, it's going to be always the same. It's going to be the verb with ing. You don't have to think about, oh, what is it? No, nope. it's going to be automatically. Okay, the same for the progressive. It's going to be the verb with ing. The difference is the first word. If you have the present continuous, okay, that means that all, it, all that they are saying is the verb to be, is in present, okay? But the other part, okay, is the verb always with ing. Is that okay? Are there any questions? No, uh, in my case, I don't have questions. Okay. What happened if you hear the name past continuous? What does that past continuous mean? Uh, 
Okay. So if you hear the past continuous, it means the verb to be is in the past, but the verb is with ing. Okay. The same. If you hear the future continuous, is the same as the others. Is the verb to be in the future? Okay. And the ing. Does that make sense? Okay. So you can see in the chat what I'm referring to. Always when we see the continuous form or when you see the continuous in the grammar, it means ing. It means the verb with ing. If you see the present continuous, it means the verb to be in the present with the verb in ing. If you see the name past continuous, it means the verb to be in the past and the verb in ing. If you see the verb, if you see future continuous, it means the verb to be in the future and ing. Okay. And always the same thing. When you hear the, or when you see the word simple, it means the base form. Present simple, the base form in the present. The past simple, the, the base form in the past, okay? That's the idea for the simple form. Any questions for the present continuous or the present simple? Luis, do you have a question? Um, could you please uh, the past continuous be uh, be in the past um, with the, with ex with example? Of course, sure. I can give you the example. You can check in the in the chat in the chat here. You can see I am writing what I am explaining. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in. So let me put down so that we are clear. So when we are talking about, like you mentioned, something like the past continuous, we're going to use was, or we're going to use the word were, okay? Now remember that the difference is he, she, it, was. I, you, we, they, were, okay? Mm -hmm. So, okay, let me put it in here so that it's clear for us. Okay. Let's continue. Right up there. Oh, on the future, yes, teacher. Future. Oh, the future, okay. okay. Uh -huh, future. No problem, I'll put that in there too. So you can see the past continuous will be was working, Okay, sorry, mm -hmm. was, was working or were working, depend, but always with working, okay. So let's take a look at the future continuous so that it's clear. Okay, so the same idea, we use the verb to be in the future, okay. So we use, okay. And then we're going to use the verb in ing. Is that okay, Luis? I'm going to put for the third person so that you can see. Uh huh. Okay. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use the base form of the future. The base form of the future is is going to, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm okay. going to or are going to, but mm -hmm. we use the verb to be in normal. I am going to be and then ing. I am going to be and ing. This is the future continuous. If you say I am going to visit my mother, this is only the future. I am going to watch TV. I am going to cook. 
This is only the future tense. But if you say, I am going to be cooking, watching, reading, this verb to be changes for the future continuous. Okay. That is going to be the teacher, difference. Yes. Um, in another form, in the future continuous, is possible, um, for example, um, um, I will be uh, raining or sunning all day tomorrow. Yes, is correct. That is another form in the future continuous. That is correct. The will, okay. the will is also the future, but the same for the the going to. You need the verb to be. So it's going to be necessary. I will be uh, swimming. I will be. Uh, cooking. I will be whatever you plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. You're welcome. It, everybody else, it's okay. Are there any questions? Future, con uh, sorry, for the future or the present or the past continuous. This is, remember, the continuous always is ing. The difference is the verb to be. If you see present, the verb to be in present. If you see past, the verb to be in past. Okay, thank you. For You're welcome. Your answer. Okay, so today, then if there are no questions, then we continue with today's topic. Today's topic is we're looking at the past perfect, okay? Here we have a past perfect tense, okay? Before we take a look at it, does anybody know what is the past perfect? Here it is. Here's, you can see on my screen, maybe it, it helps you a little bit to understand. Okay. So what is the past perfect? The past perfect is for the things that occurred before another time or in the past. Okay. So if we look at it like the three times, right? We have past perfect, past continuous, and past simple, okay? So we don't confuse, we have three, right? The three in the past. The idea is the past perfect is first, the past continuous is second, and the past simple is third in the order of the events. Now, why? what happens if we only have two? If we only have past continuous and past simple, okay, then past continuous is first. What happens if we only have a past perfect and past continuous? Well, the past perfect is first. Is the order. Past perfect, the first activity. Past continuous, the second activity. And past simple, the third activity. Don't worry, I see the face, the face say, mm, I am, mm, ya me perdí. But don't worry, don't worry, I got it, I got it, don't worry. I, I show you the video, and maybe with the video, we, we can do it together, okay? <laughs> okay. All right, let's watch the video. This is the main idea of the perfect, the past perfect, okay? Good. If you have questions, Remember, when the video finished, ask so I can explain and answer your questions correctly. Okay, so first, let's watch the main idea of the past perfect. Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to express an event that occurred before another event in the past. For example, I went to a party last weekend, but when I got there, my friends had eaten all the food. I'll explain the structure in a little bit, but the most important thing to remember about this topic is how and when to use it. Therefore, I would like to spend a few minutes giving lots of examples. So if um, we write the example that I, I gave to you in uh, just a couple of seconds ago, um, I let me write that down. I went to a party last weekend but uh, when I got there, my friends had eaten all the food. Okay, so if we think about that example there, what I'm doing is I'm talking about 
two events that occur in the past and it's important for me to relate the two because that will uh, emphasize my idea it will outline what I'm trying to express I went to a party last week this is what took place last weekend so that is that X if you will all right but when I got there my friends had eaten all the food and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that in a different color um, my friends had eaten all the food this is the event in the circle that you see there this happened before I got to the party so whenever I say I went to a party last weekend and my friends ate all the food what that means is that I went to the party and when I got there there was food at the party and then my friends ate it but that's not really what I want to express what I really want to explain is that I went to the party and there was no more food left because something had happened before that and that was the fact that my friends ate the food so that's why this is really important you need to know when to use this particular topic so I'm gonna continue to give you more examples now let's look at the examples on the chart as you can see the examples on the chart um, refer to uh, basically it's a it's a person that uh, was at the gym and uh, he forgot to lock his locker and therefore this is what took place right? as we'll analyze the examples that are there I was working out and I had put my stuff in my locker all right wait let, let's stop there for a second I was working out is the past event that's that X if you will what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to relate the second event to that past event and I have put my stuff in my locker so th that I have put my stuff in my locker is the past perfect event that happened before this past event so it's that little blue circle that you see there when I came back that's that event there that's the uh, past event okay someone had stolen my wallet so um, I came back but before this event someone had stolen my wallet all right they were able to steal it that's the past event so that's that X if you will because I have forgotten to lock the locker all right now that is the past perfect event as you can see there let me just give one last example here I didn't have any money because I had forgotten my wallet at home so what I want to explain is that I didn't have any money but I want to give a reason on why I didn't have any money so I'm talking about two events from the past one is that I didn't have any money that's that X that you see there All right, so let me go ahead and uh, highlight that in uh, a, let me go ahead and highlight that in a greenish color second All right. and um, before this I want to explain that I had forgotten my wallet at home and that's the reason why I didn't have any money right so as you can see both events are um, are related okay let me go back a little bit and clarify and make no one sure that we understand my okay. here what we're saying is that all of the parts that have had is the action that happened first first okay i put my stuff in the locker then i was working out first someone stole my wallet then i came back first i forgot to lock the locker then they were able to steal the things okay? so we use past perfect if you see the grammar structure we use had and the past participle had and the past participle that means that is the first option. So here in this sentence that we have here, my friends had eaten all the food. What it means is the friends ate the food, okay? And then I went to the party. So I went to the party after my friends had eaten all the food. Are there any questions at this moment on how to use the past perfect?
uh, teacher, in this example, the, the phrase in yellow is pass, uh, put the uh, slide, please. Thanks. Uh, my friend had eaten all the food is past perfect event because is, is, is right? It's correct. That had eaten is the past perfect. This is the first action that happened in that situation. So if you think about the ball here, the had eaten is this blue ball and I went to the party is the X. You go to the party after the friends had eaten all the food. Or you arrived at the party after they had eaten all the food. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Any other questions? Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, okay, in, in this case that the, the, the show up to us, uh, we have, for example, um, uh, they were able to steal it because I, ha I, I had forgotten to log the locker, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, the first event is the past perfect, right? And the second event is the uh, we're able, right? We, mm -hmm. we are, uh, uh, we can uh change the order to the to the statement for example i forgot to, uh to lock the locker and they were able to steal it it, it represents something uh i don't know incorrect or something that changed the meaning i think no but it's possible that they, they can change the meaning we we change instead to 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 to, to say they were able I forgot the first. I don't know. It's something that I, I was thinking. Very good question. Yes, it's possible to change the order. The order does not matter because the grammar is always the had is the first action, not important if it's the first part of the sentence. Had is the first action and then is the other actions. The difference is the words that you use to join them. So if you put the two, switch the two positions, it's going to be, I had forgotten to lock the rock, the, sorry, I had forgotten to lock the locker, so they were able to steal it, okay? So it's not going and to be- And always, mm -hmm. sorry, and always we use a had for the past perfect. Um, Correct, always, always, always is had and the past participle for all the people, for I, you, we, they, someone, something, that always is had in the past participle. Parsible or perfect? No, the, the, name, the name of the structure is past perfect, but is had and the past participle. So when you put, or when you write, okay? So when we say, as perfect, okay, is what we are saying is we are using had plus so when like the word continuous, the word continuous means the verb in ing, the word perfect in grammar. It, the word perfect is going to represent always, whenever you see it, is going to be the same representation. It's always going to be past participle. So if you see future perfect, present perfect, or past perfect, is always the same, is past participle. The difference, like in the continuous, the difference is the verb have. In past perfect, is in the past, had. In present perfect is in the present, have or has. And in the future perfect is will have. Okay. So that if if you remember that once you identify, it's easy once you start to imagine, ah, perfect always is past participle. 
Continuous always is ing. Simple is always the base form. Only change the first word, present, past, or future with that. It's okay there, we're, we're good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, all right. Let's watch the next video um, to make sure that it's clear for the next part, okay? Here, we're looking at the past perfect and just some examples between the positive and negatives, how we make a positive or how do we make a negative, okay? Hi, everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to form past perfect statements. We'll learn the structure and practice. So let's get started. In our previous lesson, we learned about the past perfect. And it's always important to keep that in mind. We use the past perfect to express an event that occurred before another event in the past. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to learn about the structure. So let's get started. I would like to start by making positive statements. So the first thing that I would like to point out is uh, just the structure, and then we'll see how that structure works. Let me just make this a little bit bigger so that you can see clearly. So in order to form the past perfect, we're going to have a subject, and then that is going to be followed by an auxiliary. That happens to be hat, as you can see there, color in red. And then after that, we uh, we're going to follow the past participle of the verb. So we're going to include the past participle of the verb. And then finally, we will have a complement to that sentence. In the example, we see that we're using the past event and the past perfect event. And that's because we're combining two tenses together and we're using those accordingly. So as you can see, we, we see the past event here and then we have the past perfect event as a continuation of that. But I, I mentioned that. Okay, let's, I want to pause there to make sure that we are understanding which event happened first, the one in the past event or the one in the past perfect event? Past perfect. Correct. It's not important the order in the sentence. The grammar always indicates that the past perfect is the first action. It's not important the order. It's important the grammar. If it has and past participle is the first event. Okay, the second event can be in past continuous, was working. It can be in simple past, came back, okay, or were able. But the first event is the past perfect, had in the past part. Um, these sentences can be separate or they can be together. So let's look at the examples at this time. Um, I mentioned that we're going to have some sort of subject, so we're going to say someone, all right. And I'm going to borrow that second example that you see there at the bottom. Uh, this follows the axular verb. This, in this case, is going to be hat, and then this is going to be this is going to follow the past participle of whatever verb that I'm using. So in this case, uh, the verb it's steal, all right, and the past participle of that verb it's stolen. Okay, so someone had stolen my wallet. Just to emphasize uh, what we're doing, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, try to see if I can if I can point this out in the right place so that we can clearly see what is it that I'm talking about. So the subject is someone. All right, uh, I should color this maybe blue. The same thing as it's in red. The auxiliary verb is in red, and then the past participle is. Uh, the bird that we're going to use in uh, the past participle. So in this case, I'm using the color uh, green. So let's look at the other examples that are on this chart up here. I have put my stuff in my locker. So first of all, we have the subject is I. It follows the auxiliary verb had. And then the past participle of the verb in this case is put. Um, and then we will include a complement. I have put my stuff in my locker. My stuff in my locker will be the complement. Um, finally, we have another sentence 
uh, that we want to emphasize. So let me do that right now. Okay, so we have, I have forgotten to lock the locker. So uh, once again, we have the subject in that sentence is I, excluded verb, have, the past participle of the verb forget, it's forgotten, and then the complement becomes to lock the locker. Now quickly what I want to explain is how to make negative statements in the past perfect. Let me go ahead and um, give a couple of examples here. Um, there are no negative sentences in this little chart so I'm going to make those and I'm going to try to um, <clears throat> make sense of them. So let me first explain the structure of that. Uh, so the structure to make negative sentences negative statements or negative sentences. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, the only thing that changes is that instead of had, we're going to include hadn't. Uh, by the way, this is also the same thing as saying had not. So you might see that either by saying had not or hadn't. Now, the most common thing to do is that we will use the contraction. All right, so most of the time, you'll see contractions to that effect. So let me give you then a few examples, and then um, I'm going to have you do a few examples as well. All right, so I'm going to try to see if I can fit those in into the structure that we see here. Subject is I. In this case, I mentioned we're going to use hadn't. All right, so let me just make sure that we're using the appropriate colors here just to make sure that we're understanding what we're doing. So uh, in that case, that's the auxiliary verb. Uh, and in this case, because it's a negative, we, we're going to say hadn't. Um, then we use the past participle of that verb. Uh, so in this case, um, it's lock, uh, the past participle that is locked. Um, maybe another quick example that you can probably relate to is the following. So I'm going to go ahead and write that. I hadn't finished my work, so I couldn't leave work at, at that time. So what I would like for you to do next is I would like for you to... Okay. So what is the main idea between the positive and the negatives? It's almost exactly the same. The only difference is you have the option where you can use hadn't or you can use the option had not. It's correct, I had not locked my locker and it's correct, I hadn't locked my locker. It's the same for I hadn't finished my work or I had not finished my work. The only difference between a positive and a negative statement in the past perfect is the word not. Okay, this is the only difference. So if you are clear how to make sentences in the past perfect, you are clear how to make the negative because only you add the word not. Okay, this is the only difference is the three letters not. Is it okay? Are there any questions? It's okay. Could you please explain, teacher, when when I can use a present perfect combined uh, with a oh, past perfect? That's right. The past perfect. Past perfect. Yes. Combined with a, a past progressive. Of oh. course. Okay. Uh, so we always use the past perfect uh, when we're indicating the first action, right? So uh, as an example, um, I, I had gone to the movies, okay? And then I had gone to the movies. This is the first. First, you go to the movies. And then the second action, I had gone to the movies when the phone... Uh, uh, or, or when the the, the earthquake uh, began, the simple past, or the phone rang, the simple past. The same for the past continuous. The past continuous, for example, uh, when or there was a man cooking uh, hamburgers. When I had gone to the to the barbecue or to the picnic. Okay, so the idea is. First, you go to the barbecue, the picnic, then the man is cooking the hamburgers. And usually when you use the past continuous is you have another event uh, when he burned them or when the hamburgers were burned. Okay. So usually we have only two of them. We usually either have the past perfect and the past simple, or we have the past perfect 
and we have the past continuous. We okay. don't normally have the three together. Okay. You can, if you can sometimes find it, but it's not normal to find the three different forms together in the same sentence. It's usually one or the other. Okay. Okay. But but uh, it is mandatory use. I, I can a mandatory. I use a uh, uh, past perfect. Uh, depend on your situation because the same as the simple past is is not mandatory or the past continuous. It all depends on what you're talking about or wh uh, what is happening. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, of course. Okay. A any other? Okay, I Yes. I have a question. When I talk in an in third third person, I have to change the 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 verb. Well, I use had, but if we're talking about a third person, I have to use has. In the in the present, yes. In the past, always is had. Mm. So in the present is I, you, we, they have. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, she, it has. So it's the same yeah. for the perfect. Mm -hmm. I have forgotten. Oh, no problem. Anybody else? Any other questions? Okay. So let's just make sure that we're, we're clear because we're going to practice in just a moment. So really what we need to be focused is that we use the past perfect to talk about the first thing that happened or something that happened when we're not sure or something that happened before all of the situations, okay? So um, maybe you are preparing uh, a food for an anniversary for uh, for Valentine's Day, as an example, okay? So maybe we're gonna prepare some food for Valentine's Day, okay? But when you are preparing the food, it, it was burned or you didn't cook it correctly, okay? Well, this is where you use it because you are describing your story. Ah, so you're saying, oh, I had burned the food, okay? Uh, when this situation happened or I had burned the food uh, after I, I after I watched the video uh, on how to prepare it. Does that make sense? In my case, I always burn the food. Burn the food. In your case, you always? <laughs> burn the food. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it happens sometimes, you know, it's difficult. So we need to make sure that it's, it's okay for us. All right. Well, now let's watch the next part. The next part is past perfect questions, okay? So the same idea, how do we make the different questions? Okay. Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll learn how to form questions using the past perfect tense. So let's get started. I would like to start off by presenting the formula, if you will, in order to form past perfect questions. So let me include the formula now to this document, and then I'm going to write a couple of questions, and then we're going to try to make sense of those two questions there. So let me start off by having a yes or no question, and then we're going to try to make sense of this particular question, of course, following this formula that we see here. So first of all, um, if we have a yes and no question, I will start by using had, that's the auxiliary verb, all right? 
and I'm going to go ahead and color that real fast just to make sure that we are understanding this particular topic. I think I'm using green color there, yeah. And then uh, this follows the subject, in this case this happens to be you. So let me put a little blue color there. Uh, then uh, we will use the past participle of the verb that we're using. So in this case, it's the verb study. Okay, there we go. Um, and then we have a complement. So that uh, in black, you see that that's the complement of this particular question. So the question is, had you studied English before taking this class? Right. Um, and um, that's how we form a yes or no question. Now let me write a WH question. Uh, and WH questions, well, uh, what that means is that we're going to include a WH word. And we do that whenever we want more information about a particular topic. Uh, this, the way to do it is almost the same thing with the only difference that we will include a WH word. As you can see there, we have a WH word there. Um, and then hat continues to, we use the auxiliary hat. Uh, we include the subject. Uh, in this case, we include the past participle of the verb and then whatever complement that exists. So the question is, where had you studied English before taking this class? So maybe the... Okay, so what does that mean? That means that you did the action of studying, okay? like the sentence says, you did the action of studying English before this class, or you did the action uh, of buying presents before the birthday, or uh, preparing the food before the party, okay? So it can be directly had, which the answer is going to be yes, I had, or no, I hadn't, or it's going to be with WH. And in this situation with WH, you have to explain the answer. I had gone to wherever, okay? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, Let, I think the important now is that we practice. So we're going to practice the three forms, okay? Uh, for this activity, it's in our platform. It is the last part there, 4.11. And we have the mix. It's only four sentences there, sorry. But they are mixed or four questions that are asked, but it's between the simple, the continuous, and the perfect. So with your partner, you read and you make the decision, which is the best answer the simple, the continuous, or the perfect, okay? Remember, Hello. Okay. Hi, teacher. Okay. Let's begin. Okay. Pedro, are you there? The lesson objective. No, for for eleven. Yes, for 11. Yes. For 11. Mm -hmm. For 11. Read the first, uh, Pedro. Please. The thief. And number one. A thief or, baked into. Mm -hmm, our house last night. Why my sister... Apple. Mm -hmm. While my sister and we, I were picking up a pizza for dinner. It's a broke into. 
It's in the mm -hmm. simple past block. Mm -hmm. Because bro I have where picking is E and G. Uh -huh. uh, picking uh -huh. is I and I My recommendation, uh, I for me, it's very difficult. Uh, many structures. I, in my notebook, for example, the um, similar uh, diagram or similar list, list of a structure and the past perfect, past perfect continuous or simple past, etc. For in, in order to have all the information in, in my hand for, it's only for the, the recommendation Thanks. for, for it's a, you it, it's, a, it's a good idea, it's a good idea. And my notebook, I write the, the structures or only, but uh, I, I, I do, I do that. Ah, okay, for the summary. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, next, and I guess we leave the door look, it's a hard left and the past perfect. The, the, bear, the, the bearing past participle is a left or lift. I guess we had lift. With A or sin with? Uh -huh. I guess we had. And the pairing past participle is a lift, L-E-F-T. The door unlocked because that's how the thief got into the house. And um, hard is like uh, um, the subject plus hard plus bare participle. Past participle is uh, hard. Past past perfect. Uh huh. Past perfect. This it is the first the the past seven. Yes, ma. So what? Um, the um, this the ¿cómo se llama? Have left is because uh, we it's talk past about past perfect. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, I think. I has. I no. has. No. I think I agree. I Tatiana. No, I have. I have. Shop. Not me. I have shop shopping. It's correct. Great. Teacher, no, it's not correct because I have is present perfect. Yeah, I have. I have. Yes, past perfect continue, teacher. I think maybe it's the past continuous, not the past perfect. Okay. Oh. oh. That's one. Where is the past continuous? 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 Where is the past Yes. Yes. Okay. I was there. Okay. How left? Uh, the number two on the first part is 
Um, I was shopping. Shopping. Uh huh. Uh, that is correct. Me too. It was run out. Or running out. I was running. Uh, I ran out. Run. The past round. Run. Run. Is no, with run. A. Ran R out. R. I. N. A. N. N. Out. I. Run out. Out. I sorry, but I forget all. Luckily, <laughs> um, I passed simple. I green brown. No, it's had in bro. Had bro. Had. Mm, yeah, with you. 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 With you. No. No, erase the uh -huh. you. Because English corporatives uh, sell me. Let's finish this this week. This, this week, week, yeah, yes. Yeah. Because oh, okay. they send they send the 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 um the form inscription, uh huh, and the uh, the last day will be tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yes, exactly. It's true. Tomorrow is last day for for description. Mm -hmm. Okay. We will we'll finish, teacher. Excellent. Teacher. Are there any questions? No. Uh, when when finish the course? Thursday. This week or the next week? The course finishes on Thursday next week. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know it. I knew it. <laughs> the, 18. Yes. I, I think the difference is for the registration. They do have uh, the registration finishes before the next course. Mm hmm. Yeah. But you still have okay. this week, and uh, and you have next week for until Thursday. Okay. Very good. Okay, guys, so how do you feel? Do you feel comfortable? Do you feel that you can manage the past simple, the past continuous, uh, the past progressive? In my case, I need to study more and we need to write the, the verbs in different tense. Um, Okay. Yes, usually it's the problem is remembering how are the verbs, how you write them in the past participle, how you write them in the past simple, especially the irregular verbs. Those are usually the more difficult to, to remember all of the different forms. Um, what you mentioned is correct that yes, the, the best way is by practicing, practice writing them, practice uh, using them, that way you feel comfortable with them. Okay. Anybody else have any questions or comments? No, teachers saying thanks. Um, for me, for the study, uh, for me, it's necessary in the memory to to write and the three forms in the structure or in the vocabulary in the past participle or simple past um, uh, or regular or irregular verb because it, for my memory, I to I need to put in my in my notebook and to um, make the generation the, the list on 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 the list in the 
the words for to practice or to memorize and, and the sentences, using in the sentences. Okay. Yes, I think using in the sentences is, is the best way. But remember, it's, it's, it's more practice. It's just using because, yes, you can learn the past perfect in this moment. And you say, ah, okay. But if you don't use, if you only use the past simple, it's difficult for you later to, to incorporate into your vocabulary the past continuous and the past perfect. Yes. Okay. Now, I know that we are, actually, we are, we are doing very well. We are finished today with lesson four. That means today we are complete. But some of you have not advanced in the platform. Do you need help? Are there some exercises or parts where it's difficult for you to understand? Or maybe it's only for the time. Maybe you don't have the time to, to work in the platform. How, how can I help you? We can, we can more practice, more exer exer ex exercise the next week, you know, for 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 all i don't know yes the next week is, is yes i think so and uh, mm -hmm. uh sorry yeah. okay thanks teacher uh, yes i with the the carla to uh, say this is correct is uh, important to um to be continued tomorrow in the practice uh, uh, and, and listen and, and, and write or talking about in the simple or, or, or using the pairs in the simple platform and the past perfect or in the past continuous, etc. Uh, only for practice the, the, uh, and the, the structure is, is, is okay for me too. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, we, we only have a few classes left. That's why I asked. We only have uh, this week. It's already we are finished with Tuesday. So we only have, imagine, Wednesday, Thursday, and then next week. And that's it. So yes, it's important that we practice the, the different parts. But also, that's why I asked if you have any questions in lesson one, lesson two, or lesson three in the platform. That way, you can advance. Or that way I can help you. If there, are, maybe there are parts that you say, mm, "I'm confused. I didn't understand." Okay. Yes. Okay, teacher. Okay. Thank so, you. You're welcome. So we just so that we're clear. Today the idea was we use the different past tense for different functions. The past perfect. The function is to indicate something happened before everything. Imagine you go on vacation, okay? Or you go to another place and you try the food. Ah, yes, I had this in my country. This means that before this moment, you tried the food, okay? Or I had, I, you go to uh, El, El Puerto de la Libertad and you try surfing. Ah, but before, before you surf, you had learned how to swim. You need to swim before you swim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the idea for this structure. It's helping you organize your ideas. Helping you organize when is the action is first, when the action is second, these types of situations, okay? Remember, the past okay. is the action is not finished. The action is maybe you begin. As an example, in my, in my house, I cook, okay? And I was cooking when the doorbell rang. Ding dong. This interrupts my cooking. <laughs> it's normal. Okay. Yes. This is the idea for the past continuous. And the simple, the past simple is only explain the action. I ate, I ate dinner. It's mm -hmm. finished. There's it's no two action. There's no one action before the other. It's only simple is direct okay tomorrow we're going to try using some more and i if you have questions for the platform from lesson one two three 
I help you, but you need to ask if you need me to help you because if you don't ask, I don't know if you didn't understand the lesson, okay? Okay, teacher. Okay, guys. Great teacher. Have a great Thank night. You. I see you tomorrow. Okay, Have a nice then. night, teacher. Thank you. And group. Bye. You too. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.